Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, and portfolios. Special thanks this week to Isaac, who submitted his very unique project portfolio here. Isaac does an incredible job of leveraging his own personal information to make a very interesting projects to recruiters and employers. So I think that this is a really good case study. There's also a couple small tweaks that he could make to really make this even more attractive going forward. If you're interested in having your own projects, portfolios, or resumes reviewed, please comment in the section below and also feel free to reach out to me at keng.ds at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's jump into his project and resume here. So first looking at it, his GitHub profile is, is, is very good. He has a good, you know, kind of high def photo here. He says a little bit about him and he has his, his, uh, some of his information there. One thing here is that, you know, he really does only have this, uh, this one project, this song recommender. And as he goes through, you know, kind of his educational pursuits, I really recommend that he builds out a, at least a couple more. Again, I think that this project is really interesting and very robust, but he should definitely try to make sure that he is doing more of these because you want to show some, some diversity of thought and some diversity of skill. Um, let's kind of jump right into this and we'll see kind of what we're working with here. So let's actually jump into the song recommender. All right. So it looks like I've, I've kind of scrolled through this before. This is a really solid readme. He has a good introduction about kind of who he is and a lot about his own listening history. Uh, he has a lot of data and he has a goal of creating, a, you know, comparing basically these three classification models. You know, one thing that I don't think he says in here is why this project would really be valuable to him. You know, if he had something about, okay, I, I always want to find new songs, but I just, you know, I, I, I'm already listening to music all the time. Can I use data to find songs I might even like more? I think that that would be really interesting because it's a very specific reason for actually pursuing this project. He goes through the steps very clearly and he also has a very good conclusion results. He explains why he chose a certain model and the results of the model. One thing I really would like to see just a little bit more of is the actual how he collected the data and what the data looks like specifically. So these are things that, you know, if he went out and collected his own data, he should really hype that up. I mean, that takes a lot of dedication or maybe it's just like a CSV drop, but um, there's also a couple features in here from some of the data that he uses that I was not super familiar with or they were a little bit vague. So those are things that you, you could define here or actually define in the notebook. So let's jump straight into the Jupyter notebook here. So again, this is really good at the top of the notebook. He goes through and he very clearly uh, reiterates what's in the readme. I personally really like that because some people just go through and look straight at the notebooks. It's great that you can have a clear idea about what this looks like from the get-go. I think that this is really good too. So he defined a song that you know he, he likes as uh, one that would be over 15 listens. And it's very, very, a very good idea that he chose to include why 15. Now, whenever you're making a decision around a variable or if you're imputing data or if you're gonna you know, drop rows, you should always make it very clear to the people that are reading it why you're making that decision. And he does a very good job of that here. And he also includes a nice histogram uh, to explain that. This is something he could also include in his readme. I personally really like seeing pictures in readmes. That just is more visually appealing. That's something that catches my eye in general. Um, you know, so going forward, so. This is some of the data that he gets from Spotify features. I'd really like to know a little bit more about what energy basically means or liveliness or some of these things, how they're derived. And if there's some documentation from Spotify, that would be pretty useful to, to include there. So he created the favorite column. He removed comedy, that makes a lot of sense. And now he's actually you know, he found that a lot of the songs that he favorited are actually limited. So, you know, the, the sample is very imbalanced, so he used Smote. And he explains very clearly why he used Smote 
to oversample. So in general, you don't want to undersample, which is basically removing a lot of rows and columns. I mean, removing a lot of rows so that you have a roughly equal number of, in his case, favorited songs and not favorite songs. In this one, Smote does some machine learning based oversampling, which means it creates duplicate records that are fairly similar to one another. And that, that helps a lot. That's a very good uh, kind of state of the art approach for, for replacing data. He also includes a lot of the correlations here. And I think that that's a really good idea. I definitely would have liked to have seen this core plot in the actual uh, in, in the readme as well. I think this is very interesting and we can see this tells us a lot about, you know, the data that's being used. He also could have in theory done like a PCA if some of the things are very, very highly correlated um, for his use case. So some, you know, some, I guess, like feature engineering could be practical here, especially if these are already kind of vague. So going forward, he basically wants to compare these three models and then choose one based on the F1 score. So one thing that I would ask of him is like, why would you choose F1 score? Why does that make specific sense? So I think that that's something that he should pay particular attention to and, and might wanna speak about just a little bit more. Another thing, he's very conscious of the time that each model takes. Usually time is not really a, something that you think about as a data scientist as long, as long as it doesn't take like a couple days to train once you train a model in theory you only you have to train it again maybe once a week once a month unless you're doing something that's continuously training and that's when this would make sense so i would you know want him to make sure that it's clear why time is such an important factor for him because if you're training this model once a day you're training this model once a week even if it's for a bunch of people it, it, the amount of time that it takes to train really wouldn't matter that much. So, you know, that's a constraint that depending on your problem, it might matter, but in most cases it doesn't. So he should definitely be a little bit more clear about that. So, you know, he keeps going down, he actually creates this recommendations. And then what I think is really cool is he can take this recommendations file and he made another script that actually creates this into a playlist on Spotify. So this becomes, you know, a, a, an experiment that turns into something that's actionable that can help him. You know, this is something in theory that he could productionize uh, and turn into a recommendation system for other people as well. So if he was applying to Spotify, for example, this would be an absolutely incredible project to show them. If he was looking in the music space, if he was looking into any of these recommender system type spaces, this is the type of project that really opens a lot of eyes because, you know, he is focused on optimizing an individual's experience. In this case, it's himself. There's no better test subject than yourself. And I always, you know, personally really respect people that are collecting their own data, uh, that want to improve their own lives using the tools that, that, are, that are being applied. I mean, that might be a little bit of a personal bias because my start in data science came from me collecting my own golf data and trying to improve my performance there. So again, I think that this is a really strong project. From him, my biggest recommendation is one to do more projects. You know, this is this is great, but you really have to kind of build out an actual portfolio. I would also say just make sure you're you're understanding why you're using like F1 score and why you're using time as a constraint for choosing the model. So if we go back, he actually chose the decision tree, which did not have the highest F1 score. Uh, it actually had the second best after the random forest, but it took less time to train. And that's how we chose it based on the interaction of those two constraints. And I would ask him to actually, you know, go a little bit more into depth into why, why that timing is important in this use case. So let's keep going. Let's go to his resume here. I, I think that, you know, so I've, I've obviously blurred out some of his personal information that is not a poor design choice. Uh, on his part, but let's kind of go through and and talk about how he could perhaps improve this as well. So one thing that I always recommend is putting your skills up top. That's something that, you know, when a recruiter, when, when someone is going through your resume, that's the first thing that they're going to look for. I mean, do they have the skills or the tools to be able to actually like work on the projects that we're giving them? You know, in, in a lot of job descriptions, the tools are, are some of the things that are, that are on the top of the actual 
uh, description as well. So I would recommend that he puts his skills almost first on his resume. Uh, I believe he had his GitHub and some other stuff up here, so I'm not gonna ding him on uh, not including the links. I would, if I was him, go a lot more in depth into the languages, technologies, the packages. So he used SK Learn, he used Smote, he used uh, a bunch of other different packages, and he should absolutely put that on his resume. The more specific you can get with the actual tools you can use, the better, I think. Um, one thing that I really like that he does is he includes the, link the links to the specific projects, and that's in like the, I guess it's in the, well, I can't click it here. You can click it on his other one, but you know, that, that lets them go straight to the, to the workbooks. And as we saw the actual, uh, the Jupyter notebooks or the GitHub repos had really good documentation there. Another thing that I would probably like him to adjust is that, is maybe how he writes about some of his work experience. So he's really starting with what he used and then going to what the actual outcomes were. I always recommend starting with what the actual outcomes are and then going to like what you actually used. So if, if you're starting with, okay, like we analyze data for 50 plus um, trash sites and this is the outcome and then we used ArcGIS and Excel. Um, this, this second bullet where he says demonstrated leadership and communication skills by leading a team of you know, five volunteers, yada, yada, yada. You definitely don't want to include the demonstrated leadership and communication skills. That's implied by what you, by what you actually did. You know, you never want to say like, I'm good at this. Um, you always want to show recruiters, employers, whoever it is that you have those skills through how you talk about these things. So I, I think that this resume is totally fine. I mean, it is a bit more stylized than I would generally recommend, you know, some, I, you know, I applied for a lot of jobs and I used two, two different resumes. Generally, I sent a more stylized resume to startups and a more, I guess, kind of traditional resume to, to actual, you know, the Fortune 500 companies, etc. when I was applying. And I got a lot better results with the more vanilla basic resume. So if you're trying to maximize your chances, I would recommend using a bit more basic form. If you're trying to find a company that really matches your personality and you, you know, you're already an established data scientist, you already, um, you, you really care about fit, then having a resume that is very personalized or, or is more stylized, things like that, I believe is totally fine. So that's kind of a personal choice based on your individual situation there. So again, the biggest takeaway here is that, you know, uh, I think Isaac should do a couple more projects, but really good stuff, incredible project that I think is very, very unique. And I'd love to see other people have unique projects like that, especially where you're leveraging your own data. So anyone watching, I think that this is a good case study and you should you know, maybe take notes about and, and start to brainstorm, okay, what can I, what data is really relevant to me? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be about yourself, but it should potentially be in that realm. So. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.